Hey guys, it's Hink here. Uh, I'd like to bring you on another video today. Uh, today's topic is gonna be basically how to not get injured doing this. So these are some of the, the common pitfalls and uh, things that I've come across that I think can make your PE journey hopefully a lot safer if you kind of take these steps uh, in the beginning. Before I get started too much, I uh, just wanted to say that you know, I'm not an uh, I'm not a PE expert. Okay, I, I truly don't know who is because, you know, that's another video for another day. But there's people that have like researched a lot and like read a lot on forums. But once again, it still doesn't make you an expert necessarily just because that you know, like like Leo said, oh, I I read a bunch on Thunder's Place or whatever. And so, I'm not trying to discredit those guys. But my, the point of me saying all this is that. I'm not an expert. I'm open to critique. Um, I honestly, I just ask that you don't be an asshole in the comments. Um, and so there's frequently people that are on Reddit that, you know, sometimes even make valid points, but just they're so douchey about it. Like I'm not some expert telling you guys like, you know, this is the fundamental, this is the way it is. I'm learning along the way and I'm trying to pass along what I learned along the way to try to help other people. And if there's something that's incorrect or maybe something that could be more correct, you know, I welcome, I welcome the criticism because I want to get accurate information out there. So anyways, just don't be a dick. Um, and so uh, anyways, let's get started. And so I think that one of the first most important things you can do is just to take a thorough inventory of your dick. How does it look in both the hard and both the erect states? Are there any lumps? Are there any bumps? Does it lean to one side or, the, or another? What's your erection angle when you get hard? What's your kind of average hardness that you get? Um, you know, how often are you getting morning wood? Uh, what do your veins look like? What do they look like in proportion to the rest of your penis? Um, do you normally get pains in certain areas or you know when you have a bowel movement do certain areas hurt in your pelvic floor? All of these things you need to know what's normal before you can know what's abnormal, okay? I have guys that will message me online and say hey, you know this I have this new vein that, that look that's there on my dick Is this an injury? And I'm like, well was it there before and they're like, well, you know, I really don't know and so yeah, you really have to get a baseline. I recommend you take a series of both pictures and videos of your dick in both the flaccid and erect states. And so you can have that as a guide before you get started as to what thing, what normal looks like. So if something does happen, you can know exactly what it used to look like and what it used to be like, and is this normal or not. Um, something that I also see is people, once they start PE, are hyper vigilant as far as their awareness of their dick. And so things that were, were there before, they never really picked up on, but now it seems new to them because they never noticed it and it was there all along. So you can save yourself a lot of headache. Uh, the number two thing is cliche as hell I know, but just remember this is a marathon and not a sprint. You're looking at gaining between a half an inch to an inch of length in the course of a year. And I'd say between a quarter of an inch to a half an inch in girth over the course of that same year. I think those are very realistic. Some of them, especially when you're talking about the higher goals, um, you know, they are a bit lofty, but I think it's, it's actually feasible if you can stay with it and stay consistent. Um, when you see people that post, especially on Reddit, and they're like, oh, I gained uh, you know, a half an inch in three months, part of that's probably gonna be from erection quality, and part of it is probably gonna be from something like they're fresh out of the pump, and they measure a pumped dick, which is not fair. <clears throat> and even if they are truly getting a half an inch in girth in three months, you know, that doesn't have shit to do with you, okay? That has nothing to do with your growth weight. You can try to see what they did and try to learn from it, but don't let that discourage you just because somebody else is growing at potentially a faster rate. I often say that, you know, I grew at a rate of just shy of 0 0.1 inches per month, um, and my growth was almost half that. And, you know, now I'm, depending on how hard I am and whether I'm sitting or standing, I'm between, you know, a, a 1.3 inches to 1.5 inches in length and um, right at I finally crossed my threshold and I'm about right at you know 0 0.8 inches of girth and that's over the course of two years with about three quarters of that being active PE so just take your time and know that this is a long haul you're looking for long-term gains not day-to-day -day gains um, progressive overloading is also important when it comes to PE you want to um, 
start as slow and gentle as possible and get a feel for how things are working, whether that's pumping, clamping, hanging, whatever you're doing, manual stretches. Start with very small sets and see how your dick responds to it before you move forward. Um, you can gradually increase the pressure. You can gradually increase the weight. Um, you can gradually do these things once you know how you tolerate them uh, and how to avoid injury. Because if what's going to happen is that if you say you're going to start hanging and then, I don't know shit about hanging, but you, you throw on a 20 pound weight and do that and you injure your dick, um, you're, you're going to lead to, that's going to lead to an injury. And so start slow figure out what works for you, figure out how it feels, figure out the actual logistics of the device or the manuals, whatever you're doing, and then gradually increase the time of your sets or the pressure that you're using accordingly. Just start slow and gradually increase. You don't have to keep increasing the pressure or the weight. Sometimes you do need a little bit extra stimulus in order to continue to grow. Other times you just need a steady, constant stimulus and you can continue to grow that way. Next, um, listen to your body. And so when I have guys that have more significant injuries, it's because they actually had some numbness that they kind of ignored about a month ago. And then the numbness got progressively worse and progressively worse and to the point where now that they have a permanently numb dick and hard flaccid, when if they had just stopped when they were first noticing it, they would have avoided it. And so when in doubt, if you think you're having any side effects, any changes, anything that's concerning, stop all PE, just stop all of it together and give yourself a fucking week off and make sure that this isn't an injury and it's, and it's something else. Or if it is an injury, give yourself plenty of time to recover and catch it early. This is not one of those things where you want to try to push through. You want to take it slow and take it easy. This is your one dick. You only get one, okay? And if you break it, you know, it doesn't, make, it doesn't help if, you know, it's an inch bigger if you can't use it. Um, so, and when in doubt, go see a doctor as well. This is thing, something that's a little bit controversial, in my opinion, honestly, because a lot of doctors don't know shit about PE and they don't know anything about urology unless they're actual urologists. And even your urologist is going to say, oh, no, you're fine. This is in your head. Here's a prescription for Viagra. I can't tell you how many times that I've heard that. And so um, I have a big database of posts and studies online. Um, you know, I'll probably try to get it to scroll over here where you can go to, go to my profile. It's pinned at the top on my Reddit. I'm, you know, the user Hinkle McCringleberry and scroll down and I made a whole post about um, what to tell your doctor if you get injured on how to actually, you know, coach yourself through these injuries on what to tell them so they take you serious and actually address your concerns. Okay, um, next, cardio and a healthy body weight. Uh, you're, the key to health in general is good blood flow. Healthy blood flow that's going to deliver that oxygenated blood is important for recovery and overall health. And so if you have shitty cardiovascular um, health, your heart is not functioning appropriately to deliver that blood where it needs to go. You can develop um, like atherosclerosis. Um, you can develop high blood pressure, which is going to damage that vasculature. I um, mean, you know, all of these things are going to lead to poor penile function long term and increase the risk of you getting injured in the short term. So you want to have good cardiovascular health. Okay. Um, so what that typically means is American Heart Association recommends 150 minutes of cardio per week. Okay. However you want to break it up, but that's what I would recommend. You need to be in good cardio shape. You don't just need to lift. Okay. Um, next don't smoke or consume nicotine. Um, there was a one user that posted a study about nicotine and angiogenesis. I think that's more in when we're talking about the carcinogenic perspective as far as how cancers can use nicotine to actually develop new arterial pathways. I need to look into that a bit more. Uh, but in general, nicotine is a vasoconstrictive agent, meaning especially those smaller arterioles and smaller blood vessels in the distal extremities or in the penis, it's going to cause those to um, decrease in size. And it does it all over your body. And that's why nicotine itself, not just tobacco smoke, the vapors always want to argue, me, argue with me on this, but nicotine itself increases your risk of stroke and heart disease because of that exact vasoconstriction. So avoid that because if your um, vessels are constricted, it's not going to allow adequate blood flow to the penis. You can have higher risk of things like erectile dysfunction, higher risk of energy or injury because you're not getting that healthy oxygenated blood to the penis. Okay. Um, follow instructions for the most part. Okay. Especially when you're getting into this, you don't really know what you're doing. If you read one of BD's guides or M9's guides, whoever's guides, 
um, and they say, you know, do three sets of five minutes, don't start doing three sets of 10 minutes, okay? Listen to what the guides are. You know, like I, I said, I, you know, there's, there's a question about who's an expert and who's not. But in general, the stuff that has been passed down is the stuff that works and the stuff that is safer. And the people that, you know, especially like the veterans in this game, like I would say, you know, like M9 or BD, um, you know, have suffered a lot of injuries themselves. Even, even me at this point, I've had some injuries that I've had to learn from. And so when people say, you know, do this or don't do this, listen to them. I quibble with BD on this point a little bit. Um, but like, I, I personally think that if there is pressure in your penis, whether it be from pumping or whether it be from clamping, you should not be kegling. You know, an involuntary kegel here and there is not gonna be the end of the world. But you should never, in my opinion, ever do like sets of kegels when you're either clamped or in a pump. I think that's gonna to lead to pelvic floor dysfunction and injury. How do I know? I had some of that exact same injury. And so also, I mean, from a physiological perspective, it actually makes sense why that would happen. But all I'm saying is listen to the people that make these guides. Do your own research. You might need to figure out what works for you a little bit better. Some people do one set of 10 minutes for pumping. I like to break mine up into sets of five to seven minutes. It works better for me and my lymphatic system. And so there is some wiggle room, but in general, listen to the overall guidelines, especially from the knowledgeable people in the game. This is one that's a little bit controversial as well, but incorporate rest days. The way I uh, practice PE is I rarely take rest days. I only do about 30 minutes of manual stretches and then I do the uh, basically hydro pumping for about three sets of five to seven minutes. Pumping has been proven in multiple different papers to actually increase penile blood flow, can help reduce your risk of erectile dysfunction and help recover people that have erectile dysfunction, they can recover their erectile function again. So pumping in general, I think is a healthy exercise. And I think especially when I'm pumping, it adds healthy blood flow to my dick. And so I don't feel the need to take additional days off when I'm doing 30 minutes of stretching. And then you know, around 20, 15 to 20 minutes of pumping that is actually gonna help my overall health. And in general, I think an hour of PE a day, the way I do it and the way my personal dick feels, it isn't something that I need to take additional time off for. There's some people where that same regimen, they, their dick would feel fatigued or they would have a noticeable decrease in erectile function and it's important to take rest days. You know, when in doubt, take a rest day. Um, you know, you can recover, you can give your penile tissue a chance to recover, and you might not even realize that your erectile function has gone down because it's kind of been consistently down because you haven't taken some time off. And so, you know, once again, listen to some of the veterans, figure out what works for you. Um, for me, I need to take a rest day about once every two weeks or so. And um, I wouldn't say I need to, I just do it to make sure to, to maximize overall penis health. Um, but along with that, another plug for pumping, I think low pressure pumping, doing um, you know, one to two sets of 10 minutes of low pressure, like three to five inches of mercury pumping, I think that that is a perfect thing to add to anybody's routine for overall penile health, okay? Um, stay hydrated. I made several posts about staying hydrated. This is one of the posts that like, I don't, whatever, it's not about upvotes and whatnot, but I don't know why people don't listen more to this advice, but if you're not hydrated, your blood is more viscous, meaning it, it's, well, your blood is thicker and it can't actually get to some of those distal extremities and distal like penile arterioles that are necessary because it's thicker. But also when, it's, when you're dehydrated, your blood volume is less. And so there's physically not as much blood that your body can divert to other areas. There's also something that's called angiotensin, which is literally this signal that causes your blood vessels to constrict. And so all of these things combined lead to less blood flow to the penis, higher risk of injury, and a higher risk of erectile dysfunction. So you need to stay hydrated. Drink until when you pee, it's basically either clear or very, very light yellow. I mean, it's as simple as that in my opinion. For me, it takes about probably four liters of water a day. I'm also a pretty big guy. Um, for others, it might not quite be as much, but stay hydrated. You need to get good quality sleep. Um, this is another one that's not a sexier part of PE, but when you sleep, important hormones like testosterone and growth hormone, are, which are necessary for you know, penile health and even recovery from injury, those are released, but it's only in the deeper cycles of sleep. So if you get shitty sleep or you're only sleeping a couple hours a night, you're not gonna have the same uh, release of that testosterone or growth hormone or some of these other very important factors. And so 
I'd recommend you get about eight hours of sleep. For some people, it's not feasible. Get as much as you can to make sure it's high quality sleep. Um, if your sleep quality sucks, you can consider adding something like melatonin or even Benadryl. They're non-habit forming, they're non-prescription, at least here in the US, and they can help improve sleep quality. Sometimes adding something like a moisturizer from before bed. Um, so, um, you know, uh, I know BD has a cream. Uh, one of the commenters pointed out that the DMSO that's in there, there is, I need to fact check this, but it could potentially dry out the skin. Um, I've seen kind of conflicting evidence on the my cursory Google, Google search I did, but he has a recovery pea cream um, on his website. Um, you know, there's also stuff like um, Jergens Ultra Healing Lotion that just has like vitamin C, vitamin E, coconut oil in itself. This is more so for overall skin health of the penis because, you know, you can put your dick through the ringer. But if you apply a moisturizer before, before bed, it can kind of soak in and help keep your penis skin healthy. Um, and then this one is something that I think it's underutilized uh, and it's basically doing your own research and educating yourself. I like that, you know, I, I love that so many people trust what I have to say and so many people care about what I have to say. Um, but I can't tell you how happy it makes me when I see somebody that's not me or not BD and they make a post and it has like a PubMed actual like literature citation in it. Um, it's not like, yeah, I'm a doctor, whether you want to believe me or not, whatever, I don't care. But it doesn't take an MD, like everything that I'm doing, you could do at home. You could say, hmm, what's an interesting question? I wonder how priapism relates to erection quality. And you can go on Google and type in, or, or go on PubMed and type in priapism and erectile function. And you could read all of the papers or at least the abstracts that are available. And you could form a conclusion that, you know, priapism, though it might increase your penis, can decrease your actual erectile function. And it might not be a good idea and make a post like that online to guide others. But along with that, if somebody makes a post about um, you know, anything that, that might be, so even the sets of pumping, you know, somebody says, well, I do, uh, I do one set of 30 minute pumping. Like there's actually literature that is out there that you can extrapolate from that I found and say, well, you know, sure you could, but you know, this literature says that after about 30 minutes, you know, that's really not a good idea or the, I'm rambling now, just do your own research and, and actually do your own research. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a pet peeve of mine, but I'll make a post and then, you know, there'll be a few guys that, you know, jump out in the comments and, you know, have them wax and wane and make these all like poetic comments. Like, that's fine. I'm great. Put out the information, you know, especially if you do it at least in a non disrespectful way, but why not just make a separate post and say, you know, these are my thoughts on clamping and why it's safe or why it's not safe or why this is the best exercise rather than just sounding off in the comments all the time. I don't know. But anyways, um, do your own re research and actually do your own research. Um, you know, I know it's a, kind of harder when you're just starting out, but as you get more involved in this, it's not that hard to actually do some research or do some deep dives and try to figure out more for yourself and share that information with others. That's how we're going to get this community into out of the shadows and like, oh, P doesn't work derp, derp, into actual like real science. And this will never be mainstream, just like, you know, why there's fitness models that diet and stay in shape. And that's why they're models, because it's hard to do this shit. And so uh, there's never going to be a point where, when this will be mainstream, in my opinion. That's another video for another day. But anyways. Um, another technique or another advice that, um, that M9 came up with was um, just start with, if you're a beginner, start with beginner's techniques. And so if you were just starting out, don't jump, try to jump into clamping, you know, try to jump into more of the beginner routines or a manual routine. Um, if you kind of try to advance too quickly, you're going to get injured. Um, make sure uh, there's a user, uh, Let's see, Mike Ami PE that uh, that commented this that I liked, but make sure that you know how to do the actual exercises before you start doing them. Like really do a deep dive and try to learn that like everybody everything anybody has posted about it as to like what's the risk of injuries, how to avoid the injuries, um, you know what are the best ways to do it. 
Like for example, I still don't think a lot of people know that when you do manual stretches, you never grab your glands, the actual penis head. You wanna grab about like a half a centimeter to a centimeter um, proximal or closer to your body um, than the actual penis head because if you pull on the actual glands of the penis, that's gonna cause nerve damage and potential separation long-term of the glands from actually the corpus um, cavernosum. And so, like people start manuals and don't even know where to actually grip. And I, it just blows my mind that people can be that kind of nonchalant about their actual overall dick health. The last thing I'll say is just really evaluate if this is worth breaking your dick. You can absolutely do it safely, um, but if uh, I do know people that wanted to get a bigger dick, you know, hopped on the bath, might pumped it up too quick, permanent nerve damage, okay? And now they're reliant on either injections or very high doses of um, Viagra to actually get direction. And so if you're already a good size or already comfortable and you're just kind of looking for, you know, a little extra edge or something, just really evaluate if, is, it, is this worth breaking your dick? Is it really worth it? For me, I, I mean, I would have done anything to get bigger. That's part of my mental pathology, but um, just, just really evaluate things before you get started. I hope you found this helpful. This is the end of the video. Um, please uh, like and subscribe. Um, if you would also check out uh, Leviathan Wellness. Um, that is a supplement company that me and BD are coming out with that we're, we're gonna be promoting things like an EQ enhancer or a blood flow like maximizer that, that can help with certain aspects of PE, increasing erection quality, minimizing um, injury risk, and even uh, things that you know some guys want, just like you know a semen volumizer. So um, check us out on Leviathan Wellness. Uh, we'll be releasing more information soon. I uh, hope you guys find this helpful. Um, please feel free to comment um, anything you like in the comments. Um, anything helps uh, the channel grow. Um, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.